Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So for those who don't know, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. It's my favorite film franchise of all time. So where does the third movie fall in my ranking of the series? Well, let's find out. It's Harry's third year, and after blowing up his Aunt Marge, inflating, not exploding, he returns to Hogwarts, but a crazed murderer named Sirius Black, played by Gary Oldman, has escaped from Azkaban prison, and is looking for Harry, for reasons that are too spoiler-heavy for me to get into. So the Ministry of Magic has set up their own guards around the school, those being Dementors, large cloaked beasts that suck the happiness from anybody they come in contact with in order to capture Black. So I find when it comes to Prisoner of Azkaban, there's two camps. Those who haven't read the book think this is one of the best. Those who have read the book think it's one of the worst. I would put it in the middle. I don't like it as much as Chamber of Secrets or the Deathly Hallows movies. I'd probably put it on par with Half-Blood Prince, which I think is pretty underrated. Now, when I first saw this movie back in 2004, I was a little taken aback by how different it looked. The tone was dark the colors were more muted. This was a huge tonal shift. But now, I love it. It kind of reminds me of a series of unfortunate events. Kind of quirky, but also dark. And my god, the special effects hold up really well. When Harry is flying on Buckbeat, it really looks like he's flying. Even the later movies had problems with flight, but for some reason, this in Chamber of Secrets got it right. The acting is really good. By this point, the returning actors pretty much became the characters in my eyes, and Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grant have some really funny banter. But the new actors like David Thewlis as Lupin and Gary Oldman as Sirius really make these characters come to life. This was also the first appearance of Sir Michael Gambon as Professor Professor Dumbledore after the sad passing of Richard Harris. And honestly, I thought he was really good in this. Yeah, in the next film he had some questionable moments, but I thought he was really good here. As an adaptation, it's pretty good. I honestly don't get why so many book fans dislike it. There are a few things missing, like the Marauder's backstory and Crookshanks being a Neasel, but for the most part, it follows the book pretty well. I especially love the way they handled time travel, and again, the special effects and timing in that scene are excellent. The music is great, this would be the last Harry Potter film John Williams did the score for, and he went out on a high note. And again, it just looks incredible. It's probably the second best directed Potter film after Deathly Hallows Part 1. And man, the Dementors, how they move and the sounds they make, they're still haunting. their flaws? I can think of two. One, the tone can sometimes be a little clunky. I always think of that scene at the Whomping Willow, it always came off as kinda cartoonish, whereas the rest of the movie was more realistic. As realistic as a movie about wizards can be. Like when Hermione grabs Harry's shirt. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like something out of Looney Tunes? But the second, and by far my biggest problem, and you know if you saw my worst Harry Potter movie moments, is Ron. Now don't get me wrong, Rupert Grant is good and he has some funny lines, but he is useless in this movie. He adds absolutely nothing, not one thing. And that would be bad enough, but almost every line he says is him being angry or afraid. And if I had to nitpick, the tone and look of the movie probably would have worked better if it was closer to the first two movies. The Goblet of Fire was the turning point. This movie was supposed to be like the other two, a nice lighthearted adventure with some dark elements. Now I don't mind that because it was done so well, but as an adaptation that would make more sense. So yeah, Prisoner of Azkaban is a fantastic movie. I love the look, I love the characters, and I love the story. For some people it's the best, I wouldn't go that far, but it is really great. I give it a 9 9 out of 10. It's actually the lowest grossing Potter film, and that's including Fantastic Beasts, but it still made a ton of money, which is more than I can say for Curran's next film, which also happens to be one of the greatest films I have ever seen. So join me tomorrow for that.